Alright, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Bam Season TV. I'm coming at you with another video. We're gonna be transitioning to uh more of uh like reaction videos and shit. So uh cause you know they talking about coronavirus getting higher and shit. So uh just make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna be doing a lot of shit. But this first video we're gonna be doing is uh Lil Dirk is cursed and why people should stay away from him and shit. It's really crazy cause uh you know, all these rappers dying and shit, so we're really going to get into the depth, in-depth analysis, and we're going to listen to what our guy is talking about, our guy, uh, Hello, Hello Assin or something like that, he makes videos about analysis and shit, so just make sure you stay tuned, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my thoughts on it, so let's get into it, though. 10 of my series on the 48 Laws of Power, where I connect three from each story in hip-hop or the music business. And today the story is about Lil Durk and why everyone, and I mean everyone, should try to stay as far away from him as possible. If you like analysis videos on hip hop and rap, then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Law 10 is infection. Avoid the unhappy and unlucky. You can die from someone else's misery. Emotional states are as infectious as diseases. You may feel you are helping the drowning man, but you are only precipitating your own disaster. The unfortunate sometimes draw misfortune on themselves. They will also draw it on you. Associate with the happy and fortunate instead. The story we're going over... Alright, let's calm down right there. Because that little quote right there. Let's Actually, let's, let's, let's go back to it. Shit says, associate with happy people and fortunate instead. So that just saying, like, when you out there in those streets doing it for the kids, make sure you're around happy people. People that do shit that's... They're just doing shit to help them and shit. Don't be with people who just not, they have bad fortune and shit. That's what that really said to me and shit. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the video, though, when he's talking about what he says next or some shit. All right, let's go. She was born in Ireland hold on, hold on, but went hold on. to Paris in the 80s. The story we're going over takes place in 19th century Europe. His name is Marie Gilbert. She was born in Ireland but went to Paris in the 1840s to make a career as... Hold on, my bad. Would y'all date her? Like, look, look, look at her face structure, though. Like, it kind of looked like like she kind of a different kind of female. Like, just the way she, the structure of the face is. So, I don't really know what kind of female she is. But, anyways, let's get back into the video, though. Dancer and performer. She took the name Lola Montez and was claiming she was a flamenco dancer from Spain. Her career wasn't going too hot. And five years later, in order to put food on the table, she became a courtesan and one of the most successful ones in Paris. A courtesan is basically a prostitute or an escort. I mean, you know, sometimes in life when you're like, when you're starving for the food and you're not, you're not really, you're not really bringing food home. You got to do what you got to do out there in them streets. I'm not saying being a prostitute is bad or I'm just saying, you know, when you, when you're out there, you're not putting food on the table and you got to do what you got to do out there in them streets. So respect to her. She got to do what she had to do out there in them streets. So, you know, I don't blame her. Let's keep going. Or a whore. One that works with mainly wealthy dudes, though. There was one guy that could save her dancing career, and that was the owner of the newspaper that had the largest circulation in France, Alexandre Dujarrier, and the drama critic of that same paper. She decided to do some research on him, or stalking, as we should call it, and she found out that he went riding every morning. She was a good horse rider, <laughs> definitely a lot better than her dancing. So she was riding one morning and just happened to run into him, or so he thought. She quickly seduced him and within a few weeks she moved into his apartment. They were happy together for a little while, and with his help, her dead career was beginning to get some life. And even though he was a high class individual, he told his friends that he was going to marry her in the spring. But his life was going to take a turn for the worst because of this love. He was invited to a party that was going to be attended by some of the richest young men in Paris. Lola wanted to go with him, but he refused to let her. They had a fight, and Dujarrier ended up going alone and got really drunk. He insulted a very important drama critic by the name of Jean-Baptiste Rosemont du Beauvalon. Likely, right. First of all, I just want to say, how are you going to marry a shorty that you barely, you just met pretty much? And she's out here doing shit that, I mean, I'm a type of guy that I want to marry a type of shorty that's doing not out there in them streets because uh, I'm just held to a higher standard or I should say but I mean the past is always the past but 
she that's what she does for to put to put foot on the table. So I wouldn't go that route. But anyways, let's get back into the video. To his criticism of Lola's dancing, Jean Baptiste challenged Dujarier to a duel the next morning, and unfortunately for Dujarier, he was one of the best shooters in all of France. He tried to apologize to Jean Baptiste, but he wasn't having it. And during the duel, Dujarier got shot and killed. Lola decided to leave Paris. It wasn't long. How you gonna? Sh you know this man is a shooter out there in them streets, for one. So you know he's one of the best out there, and then you gonna challenge him for two. So that's really under on him. You knew, you knew what it was when you was getting into it. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell the kid. But whatever. Or she was on to her next man. She was in Munich and was after King Ludwig of Bavaria. So like most IG thoughts, she knew she had to get through the tour manager before she could get to the rapper. <laughs> I like I like how he put the bundles of Britney thing. Cause she's she's one of those females that really she really puts her herself out there to like make guys really wanna like, damn ma, you know? So niggas you know athletes are trying to like she said, uh Athletes always trying to smash her and shit. You know, niggas already said that shit. So it's just all funny. But it's funny how he, he really put that bundles of bitten Britney shit. I like that. That's that's clever. And for his aide, Count Otto von Reckberg, who had a soft spot for pretty girls. He was having breakfast one day at a cafe when Lola rode by on her horse and accidentally got thrown off, landing at his feet. The Count rushed to the rescue and was enamored by N her. Niggas should have known that. Like. Like, that's that's how you know she's thirsty. Like, how you gonna accidentally fall where the nigga's s standing and shit? Like, thirsty ass. He promised he would introduce her to Ludwig. He arranged an audience for her with the king, but she could overhear the king saying he was too busy to hear someone he had never heard of, who clearly wanted something from him. Lola pushed aside the guards and walked into his room. And somehow, her dress... Hold on. How you so thirsty that you you fiending? If it was a nigga who did that, they would have killed the nigga or something. Like you so thirsty, you push the, you push the guards. Like I would have told the guards, yo, take her to the dungeon. Take her to the dungeon. Don't don't bring don't let her in here no more. Fuck is wrong with you? You that thirsty? Like you need water? Like do you need water? Do you need water? Damn. Accidentally got ripped, and her bare chest was revealed. You don't have to be a genius to guess that he would like to listen to what she had to say after that. Less than Alright. We're gonna try to skip this. Just ad found out on arcade and finds the key. It's really dope that you can change the scale of the sample and it still sounds really good. Now we're in E minor, so we need to go through it's like damn, you're so thirsty. You fiending literally fiending. E minor. Fiending to be seen. Awesome. Whatever That's just crazy to me. Less than two days later, she made her debut as a dancer on the Bavarian stage with terrible reviews, as per usual, but that wouldn't stop the king from having her booked for more shows. Ludwig himself said that he was bewitched by her. He began walking with her by his side in public. Think about it, a king with a prostitute. He bought an apartment for her in one of the most expensive places in Munich. He started buying her tons of gifts and writing poems for her. So what does tell me? So what does tell me is this dude, he was pretty much fiending after he seen her beer chested, like bro, like you're a king and you out here settling for the 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 the, the not even the cream of the top of the crop, the the bottom of the barrel, like as shorty that's not even on your level type of shit. It is crazy to me that like nigga, like nigga, like nigga. But anyways, let's get back into the video. Out of character for. Him. And with all this in the public, she would become rich and famous overnight. She definitely didn't know how to handle this, though. In one incident, there was an old man in front of her, riding his horse too slow, and she pulled out the whip you use for a horse and started hitting him with it. There was a different incident when bitch, bitch got too much power already. Like, who are you, bro? You're just a you're just a prostitute out here trying to make ends meet, and you out here whipping niggas for no reason. Like, chill, bro. Her dog out for a walk off of his leash, and he attacked the person. This got the citizens of Bavaria very angry, but Ludwig went against his own people and sided with Lola, even granting her citizenship. The pussy must have been good, because if, you, if you're doing that to side with a shorty that's out here misbehaving, then...
Maybe you don't want to listen to the common folk, but even his close advisors were warning him to stay away from Lola. But he fired... That's that's how you know it's bad. Because, like, bro, it's like when people are telling you to, like, stop fucking with a shorty, then you just have to listen to the advice because you never know what it is. (laughs) You never know what it is. (laughs) So just listen to your peers and uh, if they're telling you what it was, then uh, you might want to listen to them because... You never know, it might come back and bite you in the ash. In the ash. Let's go. Who criticized her? He didn't stop there. He made her countess and built a new palace for her and let her advise him on policy. Pussy must have been good, like I said. Becoming the most powerful individual in Bavaria since she had him wrapped around her finger. She was promoting liberalism and all these policies that the Jesuits and conservatives of Bavaria, which was almost the entire population, found despicable. Ludwig easily had to be top 10 simps of all time. But riots began breaking out and threats of... Yeah, he was a simp because if he's going out of your way to do all this stuff for her, then I don't know what what was what, what, what it is because you, you was doing something else out there in them streets. Looming civil war were brewing. Ludwig couldn't stand the pressure anymore and asked her to leave. But the people couldn't just go back to business as usual after what they witnessed from their supposed king. They forced him to leave his post. Lola was on to the next. This time, home of the worst rap music in the world. (laughs) It's funny how when a nigga loses his job, that's when you knew, oh, I'm going to leave to the next man. So you see it's a pattern of like, okay, this nigga is at a high position, so I'm I'm, going to do what I can to... To like get the nigga, and then when the nigga don't, when the nigga loses position, you want to move on to the next man. Like that's how thirsty she is. She's thirsty for water. She needs water, not water. She needs H two O. Actually, let's keep going though. This time, her prey was a young army officer named George Trafford Held, who was the son of an influential barrister, which was a high level lawyer of sorts. He was ten years younger than her, and had his pick of the litter when it came to young and beautiful females. He could have had anyone he wanted, but this grandma ended up casting a spell on him. They were married in less than a year, but she had been arrested on the charge of bigamy, which is getting married twice, because before all of this started, even before she had gone... Motherfucker, out here, like, you don't understand that, like, that's how you know you're you're thirsty. You, you're trying to get married two times, like, there ain't nothing getting married two times, but still though, like... Just relax, bro. Relax. If anything, you could date the nigga, but you don't got to get married to the nigga. Like, damn, I know you want his money, but chill, bro. Chill. Let's go, though. Paris, originally, she was still legally married to someone she had eloped with years ago. She skipped bail, and they went to Spain. But during a bad argument, Lola slashed George with a knife, and he decided it was time to dip. When he came back to England, every- Yeah, I would have done the same, too. Like, nigga. Like, what's wrong with you? You trying to slash niggas with a knife? The fuck wrong with you, son? I made you, you know? Like, I gave you my bread, and you out here trying to slash me with a knife. What's wrong with you, bro? Get out of here. Thing was gone for him. He lost his post in the army, and English society wanted nothing to do with his tainted name. See what happens when you when you try to when you try to fuck with a shorty, and then it just it's just not the right move at the right time. So you can't do that. And he tried to go back to where he was before. And they said, nah, bro, you're not one of us. Like, we don't know you. So that's what happens, man. You got to be better than that. But anyways, let's go, though. He moved to Portugal and lived poor for only a few months before he died of drowning in a boating accident. Some years later, the man who published Lola's autobiography didn't die, but he went bankrupt. In 1853, she decided to head to America, California to be exact where this granny was able to get herself a man by the name of Pat Hole, who she married. Eventually, she got fed up with him and left him for someone else. Pat became an alcoholic and depressed until he died four years later, still at a young age. But there was another individual who was a co-respondent in a divorce lawsuit against her who was killed shortly afterwards. When Lola turned 41, she decided to give all her clothes and fancy items away and turn to God, going and speaking across America on different religious topics, dressed like she wasn't a prostitute who had left a trail of destruction wherever she went. She died two years later from tertiary effects of syphilis in Brooklyn, New York. And I well, think that I mean that that says a lot, you know. 
When you out here sleeping with nippers. Not niggas, nippers. That's multiple nippers. Like, damn, bro. Like, it's going to catch up to you out here in these streets. And back in, they probably had no conservative or no treatment like that. So, you know, it was probably even worse. So, it's like, you pretty much dug your own grave. So, you know, that says it all. We call irony. Could this possibly connect to Lil Durk is what you might be asking yourself. And it's a valid question. There was a video on YouTube a long time ago called The Lil Durk Curse, and it was made by Hip Wiki, so credit to him. But to sum it up, anyone who was close to Lil Durk ended up with the same fortune as anyone who was close to Lola Montez, and that was usually death. Let's go over all the incidents one by one today. In the What's Up Music video, where Lil Durk is featured alongside Fredo Santana and Lil Reese, there are three people right next to Durk in this scene in an alleyway. The names are J Money, Newski, also known as OTF Nunu, and Pluto. J Money was killed only a couple of months later at the age of 21. OTF Nunu, who was really on the rise and made a couple of great songs, was killed less than a year later. And Pluto died in a car crash at the age of 24, the same year that video was shot and uploaded. And it's That's crazy. Like, it just don't make sense how, like, you just with somebody and then people around that are just in that whole video are just dying like it doesn't make sense you know like damn like is this guy anyways i'm not even gonna, i'm not even gonna come to a conclusion yet let's just keep going from the song guns and money by lil dirk featuring king skrilla both d rose and thf babo or bobo are in the video d rose got sentenced to 40 years in prison for a murder of a 14 year old and bobo was shot to death at age 23 as he was walking out of prison for beating a murder case on a technicality. Talk about bad luck. Or like, damn, how? Imagine just, like, you just walking out of prison, you just get shot for no reason, like, just for beating a murder case. Like, what? That, did that even make sense? Like, that doesn't even make sense at all. Like, I just beat a charge, and then you want to snipe me from down the block. Like, come on, man. In the music video for This Ain't What You Want, Bezu got arrested for murder in 2014 that was committed on July 4th of 2009, five years ago, on the Chirac All-Star Game, of course. In the music video for Big Ol' Nigga, or B-O-N, you can see OTF Chino, who was Lil Durk's manager, talking on the phone, and he ended up getting shot and killed, sitting in his car. In a different video, you can see someone with a red bulls cap by the name of Five Star. He didn't die, but he did get 20 years for selling laced heroin in Iowa, of all places. In another music video, with Lil Reese and Fredo Santana titled Beef, you can see Fredo Santana as well as see him in many other music videos, and he died from a seizure in 2018. This is one of the individuals we could just say, or chalk it up, he didn't suffer a terrible fate because... He could have died from getting shot or ended up in prison for decades. True, true. He lived a long time after the whole Chirac drill scene took off. In the video for Hose and Bottles by Lil Durk, you can see King Louie, who got shot in the head in 2015, about two years after the video, but he survived and is still alive right now. Maxwell Gadda- That shit is so crazy. To, like, survive a gunshot in the head, like, like, damn, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Uh, let's get to this kid. Who was a 17-year-old fan of Lil Durk, just took a picture with him. And only moments later, he was shot in the back and killed while in his car with a girl who also got shot. But I'm, I'm pretty... I don't get it. It's just a picture. Like, is y'all really that tight that y'all got to kill the man? Like, he just took a picture with Lil Durk and y'all just shot him for no reason. Who knew why they shot him? I don't know why they shot him. But it don't make sense, you know? She survived. For play for keeps, you can see Rondo number nine and L.A. Capone. L.A. Capone would get shot and killed in 2013 after leaving a studio session, and Rondo number nine would get 39 years in prison for murder. There's a music video for the song "Gone Lie" by Chinks that Lil Durk was featured in, and only six months later, Chinks was shot and killed in his own neighborhood. The most recent victim was Lil Durk himself. All right, so. I'm going to come to a mini conclusion. I ain't, the video ain't done yet, but I'm going to come to a mini conclusion. It's like, you're either 
if you fucking with Lil Dick, you're either gonna get shot or you might like maybe like have a a trial or some shit. I don't know what it is. Like it's just like bad luck, really bad luck. Murder, aggravated assault, shooting at, unlawful for person employed by associated with criminal street gang to conduct or participate in criminal gang activity, possession of a firearm during commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by convicted felon, and he was released on $250,000 bond. They're saying that they have camera footage of him and this other dude, I think his name is Vaughn, doing the crime, but I hope that isn't so for Lil Dirk. This is creepy, and it might seem like it's messed up to avoid certain people that bring bad luck with them, but it's the truth. There are certain people in this world that always have something bad happening to them, or anyone around them. It might seem like it's not even their fault, but they're a cloud of darkness, and there is no point in trying to save or rescue them. The best option is to stay as far away as possible. Like I said, sometimes it's seemingly out of their control, like in the case of Lil Durk. My name is Brandon Ayuk. I'm from Reno, Nevada. And I- yeah, man, I mean, it's just like, you got to be self-aware. But let's get back into the video, though. But others do it to themselves. Certain individuals that are pessimistic always have a negative view towards the world. And it's why nothing good happens to them because they're never grateful for all the good that they have in life. The reversal to this law is as follows. This law admits of no reversal. Its application is universal. There is nothing to be gained by associating with those who infect you with their misery. There is only power and good fortune to be obtained by associating with the fortunate. Ignore this law at your peril. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, man, uh, for those kids out there in those streets that want to do it for the kids and you want to do it for your family and shit, just uh, make sure you know what you're doing out there because it's tough. It's tough. I-, I just don't know like how somebody could just like just get and have this much bad luck and just just a lot of people getting killed and stuff like. And you y'all see how the sh- how he kind of re- re- like talked about the shorty who was sleeping with niggas and just she was just pretty much giving them bad luck and so just surround yourself with good people and people who are like just have something going good for them because you don't want to be one of them people out there in them streets who get caught in something for no reason and you ain't do nothing so. Just be safe out there in those streets for those kids out there watching this. Uh, so, yeah. Stay tuned for more uh, reaction videos. Just uh, like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe if you want. And, uh, yeah.